What's up, Isekith, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. I've exhausted a lot of the spells and action, so I gotta take a camp break. Cut the cub. Oh, there is an animation. Look the cub over. Camp life seems to suit the young owlbear. His coat of feathers seems fuller. His eyes look bright and inquisitive. All right, let's go to rest. Oh, cutscene. Playtime's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever you look. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil. And a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress. Moonrise Towers. And you're getting him out. If this devil is so powerful, how did they manage to get captured? Will your playmate's wasting precious time? Let's see about getting his priorities fixed. <clears throat> Clause Z, section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to a vernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mizora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh! We'll rescue your acid on one condition. Oh! And what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Respond to Will in your mind, trust Will me. Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Mizora will rescue this asset if you release Will from his pact. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? Let's go with history, that's a plus six right there. Remember all you can about devils and their contracts. A 14. Got 21. <laughs> You recall an old incantation from a children's story, said to void a devil's contract. Abi diabole et numquam ready. Abi diabole et numquam ready. <laughs> Please work. I've never seen such a Fearless display of sheer idiocy. Bravo! <laughs> Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F, Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearer's fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do mind the shadows. They've been especially hungry. See, I helped you there, Will. Really be thankful. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the blade stands for. Such an asshole. Any idea who this devil is that needs freeing? Not a one. All that matters is that we free it. Fail. And I made a mindless blob clawing at demons on the front lines of the blood war. It's not going to happen. You mean too much to the Sword Coast. And it means everything to me. I always knew what my future held. And I know I chose right. <clears throat> Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it. But I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can feel Mazora scheming, 
plotting. She won't let me go without making a fuss. Trust me on that. God damn it! Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets. What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? You heard Mizora. This is the last thing Will has to do for her. Then he's free. I want to believe that as much as you do. Almost as much as Will does. But I just know there will be more to the story. There always is. It's a bad idea to play games with the devil. You'd never win. Not ever. You know, I feel a connection between us. Like we're two souls walking the same path. I don't. You might be a little naive in the ways of the world, but I see promise in you. Ambition. Trust me, I'm nothing like you. Well, no, I was being generous. But you're not beyond hope. I just worry that we're not considering all our options when it comes to our uninvited guests. How many people are infected with them, do you think? Hundreds? Thousands? And they're not just goblin trash. There are powerful people in the worm's thrall. Whoever's waiting for us at Moonrise Towers controls it all. But if we can take that control from them, imagine the power we'd wield. Until we transform into mind flayers, you mean? That's just the thing. If we control the parasites, then we can order them not to change us. All the power with none of the tentacles. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity here. If we can control the tadpoles, we can keep ourselves safe and liberate the world from this evil. Hmm, I'll consider Do it. It's not often the universe hands you something like this. We'd be fools to squander it. Of course, this all assumes we live long enough to find this uh, moonrise, but I'm feeling optimistic. All right, let's go to sleep. Minster's visit weighs heavy on your mind. His is a face you did not expect to see again. When you last saw him, you were in your prime. No orb, no tadpole, a mage of growing renown, all power, pride, and potential. Beloved by the goddess of magic herself. It's one thing to have fallen from such heights, but to have Elminster himself now witness your humiliation is almost unbearable he would never inflict such cruel terms on you mistra must have forced his hand mistra would no more forgive elminster for defying her than she was willing to forgive you his hands are tied as it seems are yours the stakes of the task ahead are clear the absolute threatens more than faerun it threatens the goddess of magic herself the absolute must be stopped. If this is the only way, so be it. You've witnessed firsthand the absolute's depravity. It's quite something to know you now have the power to wipe it from existence with a snap of your fingers. You died too, of course. But your name would live on. Gale of Waterdeep, the light of Faerun. If only you might live to see it. Moonrise, Moonrise Towers. Towers. Make no mistake, I will have answers about these gay tadpoles. Easy, Razel. We need answers, yes. But you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Perhaps that doesn't translate. I don't know if Githyanki have honey, or vinegar, or flies, even. Let's just show some restraint. I'm capable of restraint, just as you're capable of raw fury. I trust we'll find reason to exercise both here. 